Hello and welcome to Mole Tops in Fiction. For today's video I'm doing something a little bit different and heading down to Springbok's pub in Newlands to go and check out Shackleton Brewing Company. They're a relatively new brewery who've lately been doing some really cool stuff with cask beers and even held a cask beer festival a couple of weeks ago. Let's go down to the brewery and check it out. So I'm here with Steve from Shackleton Brewing Company, based at a Springbok Pub in Newlands, literally in the shadow of the giant SAB. Um, how did you come to be in the space? Oh, well, yeah, it's, um, I mean, it's been an interesting ride just to, to get this brewery in where it is. Um, I started brewing in this very space on a 50 litre system, okay. producing the house ale for Springboks. Oh, cool. And when the time came, we managed to scale up and put the brewery exactly where it is, and we are indeed in the shadow of the giants. So cask beer is something quite unique that you're doing here at Shackleton. Uh, tell me the story behind that and how you decided on cask beer as something to do. Um, both my partner Dave and I have been inspired by British beers and cask ales, real ales. And when we brought the brewery we managed to get a few casks and a few hand pulls and we really want to push hand pulled cask beer. And and yeah, so a lot of our beers are modeled around the flavor profiles that you would put into a cask beer. Yeah, you're speaking right to my heart because I mean, that's, <laughs> that's where my sort of interest in beer like really took off in England, getting to taste their ales, mm. their bitters, the old hand pull systems in pubs. That was really part of the whole inspiration for what, why I got interested in beer. So I've always been looking in South African beer for, for guys to be taking inspiration from, from the British style stuff. So that's really cool that that, that's what you're doing here. Yeah, the, the, the British the British beers, in every local pub, you'll have that hand pull. Yeah. And it's it's beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's also got so much more versatility to the beer. It's it's evolving throughout the process of getting to the hand pull tap. And that's where you get these punchy, beautiful flavors. So would you say that's where the like key advantage of cask beer lies, is in that evolution of the beer as, yes, as yes, it's definitely. waiting to be served? Definitely, and it's and I think the most important part of our cask is the sellermanship around it. Mm. So it's up to the sellerman to ensure that that beer is the right quality when it is put on tap, and and that's and that it's an art. It really is. So, are you currently just serving here in Springboks, or are you serving beer in a wider range? Yeah. So at the moment, um, Springboks is our sort of tap room. Mm -hmm. um, all of our beers, all our experimentals, everything goes on tap here at Springbox. Okay. Um, and we've got our two hand pulls on, on, on the bar there. And then, yeah, working, we're working on uh, different locations for the hand pulls, but it's, it's, it's going to be very specific locations. For a really new brewery on the scene, um, you put together a cask beer festival yeah. last weekend, and I think that that seemed like quite an ambitious thing to, to take on so early yeah. in your brewery's life. Uh, tell me how that came about. Yeah, so it definitely was ambitious, um, but I was surrounded by the right brewers, and you, you saw it yourself. Yeah, the guys that were there, the brewers and the breweries, were all game to to do this cask thing right mm. because all of us are passionate about it and. If it wasn't for their enthusiasm into cask, we wouldn't have put on this cask festival. So it was a joint effort from all the breweries. Yeah, yeah certainly from my point of view, it seemed like a, a real great success. Uh, how did, was it that way for you too? Yeah, de definitely, definitely. I think I was success for me was um, can be measured against the quality of the beers on the day, and there was no doubting that there was mm. some real top beers, real good flavors. Um, <laughs> And and I and that's how they do the cask festivals in the UK, and it worked. So why not have a few more here? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, the public, how do you think the public took to it? Because obviously this is a, a drinking public here that's not used to cask beer. What was yeah. the reaction like? It's definitely tricky to change people's perceptions of what they think cask beer is and hand pulled beer. 
Uh, it's not warm and flat beer. It's beautiful, flavorful beer, and the public, the public loved it. It was every brewery finished their casks, and awesome. that's and that's a testament to the fact that people will enjoy cask beer here. Yeah. So now we come to the focal point of your brewery, um, the beer itself. Uh, so what have we got here? Right, so going from your side, this side, we have the Kolsch. Is our, as I said, it's the, the easy drinking session um, hybrid lager. Mm. It's a Kolsch from Cologne in Germany, using a lot of Pilsner malt. has a lot of characteristics like a Pilsner. We have the Weiss. We call it the Whaler's Vice. Okay. Um, slightly hoppier Vice, with dry hopped it, which is un unconventional for okay. a Vice, I think. But uh, no, it's managed to work out quite nicely. We have the English hand pulled cask ale, the red, okay. the English session. We have the pale ale, Australian style, Australian hops, and then we have um, the black out there. Okay, cool. Yeah. So should we start with the Kolsch? Start with the Kolsch. Okay. Yeah, not light, crisp, yeah. very nice. Yeah, I can easily imagine sessioning a few of these. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, tasty, light and fruity flavors. It's got a residual bitterness and quite a spritzy texture. The body sure. is, is quite, it's quite light and spritzy, yeah. Yeah, really nice, that. Yeah, you could put a few back. <laughs> <laughs> this is the vice, huh? This is the vice, correct. Well, it's got a good, good nose for a vice. Yeah. Slightly hoppier than normal vice. This is uh, something a bit different, and I like it. Yeah, yeah. I think we, with our with our sort of uh, experimental beers, we want to we really want to push the boundaries and try yeah. something new because it's. Yeah, why not? Eh? Cool. So what's next? Right. Next up, you have the English Red Ale, the English Session. Uh, in the UK, they'd call it a bitter um, or a or a mild. This overlaps the two styles, the mild and a bitter. In terms of car scales, I mean, this is what I'm sort of looking for. Yes. That sort of nice golden, slightly reddish color, um, clear. Yes. Yeah. Looks looks pretty smooth, like not that sort of fizziness that you get from the your sort of more typical um, keg beers that we're used to. Yeah. And you'll, you'll get, it's the foam's obviously settled out a bit, but on the head of a of a of a handful beer, you get this beautiful lacing foam. Yeah, I mean you can see it just on this little yeah taster glass. And it's and it's in theory that that foam stays on that on that the top of the beer throughout the draft. Mm, that's the, that's wonderful. And it gives that sort of cascading Guinness look. Yeah, when you and lovely it. like smoothness in the mouth. Yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, obviously with the British bitters and cask beers, I mean, those guys will go into a pub and sit down and yeah. and drink them for hours. In terms of ABV, how, how much? That's 4.3. Yeah. Slightly, okay. the guys in the UK will, <laughs> <laughs> will have contention with me here. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get a session at 4.3, but I mean, the, in the UK, they bring their beers right down to 3.5% yeah. sure. sessions. Mm. And this, I just brought it up just a little bit to 4.3. I mean, for, a, it's, it's, for a bitter, I mean, that's not too bad. I mean, you get, I mean, like extra special bitters and things like that, but yes, if they yeah. push them higher than that. Yeah. I mean, this is kind of like almost halfway between a standard bitter and a, like one of the stronger bitters, I think, in, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. And so next we have the Australian pale ale, is that right? That's correct. Bit of carbonation in the glass there. So is this um, keg? Or yes. Is this? Yeah, this is, this is draft out. Okay. We tried to get the balance, the malt hop balance on this beer. Okay, just yeah. Just because we didn't, I didn't, want to, I didn't want to create an IPA style with overloaded hops. Yeah. And I didn't want it to be too much of a malt forward sweet beer. I okay. wanted it to be as neutral and balanced as possible. And I think that fits the, the yeah. criteria of a pale ale. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm certainly someone who like enjoys a nicely balanced between the malt and, and hops, nice sessionable. Um, Pale ale, yeah. So the UK, they like to get that that, that balanced finish, or or if anything, more malt forward. Um, 
on their parallels. Mm. That's what I experienced when I was over there. Yeah, I mean, uh, that that's just like yeah, perfect balance, I think. Yeah. Cool. Now the last one, is this dark looking character here. <laughs> this is the black IPA. This is the black IPA. So yeah, not quite black black, it's kind of a reddish, pretty clear looking beer. We took yeah. our, our IPA recipe and added um, a significant amount of black wheat malt okay. towards the end of the mash, giving it that, that colour. Yeah. We could darken it a bit, as you said, it's, it's not completely black. Mm. We could darken it, but we don't want to bring out too much of the roasty, okay. roasted flavours, yeah. um, which you'll, you'll see now. Yeah, so we used uh, we used some German hops in this, okay, um, and then obviously that black wheat malt imparting a lot of a lot of maybe a bit of vanilla or okay. or some you know toast and a bit of caramel. Yeah. The nice thing about that malt is it doesn't give that dryness that you get off of a dark beer from the you know the the fine the fine suspended okay. uh, solids and, and you know, so it's, yeah. I'm definitely getting that toastiness. Yeah, I like that a lot. It's good. Definitely my favorite is the is the good old Englishman in the middle there. But um, I mean, all the beers that you that you put out here, I think, are, are really nice beers. It's really testament to this uh, brewery as, as such a young brewery to order makes it some interesting, different beers. Something that we're not quite used to in South Africa. I think that's a that's a great that's a great thing. Yeah. Thank you, and it's <laughs> it's nice to have guys. You know, tasting the beers and giving honest reviews, and, and it's, yeah, it, it only pushes us to make better beers. So this is a really cool range of beers here, from the English style bitter to something a bit different in terms of a slightly hoppy vice, a black IPA, really nice little range of beers, and um, a great little brewery, and something that I think all of us as local beer drinkers, and especially if you're into cask beer, is definitely something that you should uh, come down and check out. And uh, yeah, you'll have a good time, I, I guarantee it. Yes, definitely. <laughs> and please do come and give us a shout when you're here. <laughs> yeah, so thanks for watching this video. Hope you liked it. If you did, please uh, like and share it on social media. Also, please subscribe to the channel. And uh, come follow me on social media. I'm on Twitter and Facebook. And come and join me for a beer review soon. This has been a really cool visit to Shackleton Brewing Company. And until next time, cheers. Cheers. Cool. Cool, thank you. Thank you. That was that was lacquer.